Hello and welcome back to another Unity Tiny video. In this video, we'll be learning how to set up AI entities using almost all of the same components that our player entity is using. The only difference will be a tag determining whether or not it is a player or an AI. So we can go ahead and drop down here and you'll see how it works. If I walk close to him, he can do the full 3 attack combo on me. If I walk behind this one, he does not attack me because I am not facing him. Later we can change this to where when you are close enough to them they will face and attack you, but for now we are just doing a basic setup of the entities. You will also see that I am able to attack him, and once I attack him enough times, the same components that control the health for the player allows for the enemies to die. We can walk over to this entity and watch to make sure he's able to kill our player. So using all of the exact same code, the only difference being an AI input system, we were able to create AIs. We can go ahead and close out of this. So the first thing we are going to want to do to start setting up the AI entities is rename our player input component to say just input. Then we will create another component called AI and one more called player. Now let's go to our enemy component. Let's make him a little more red because it's not very noticeable how red he is. Now we can go ahead and add the AI tag to the enemy and the player tag to the player. You'll see that the old player input component is now called input. Now we can go into our scripts folder. We're going to open up our input system, our player input system, and we're going to create a, you'll see that we have a bunch of errors because we renamed player input to input. So we can go ahead and just rename that to input. So it'll look for every entity and in input and movement. So now, if we were to go to our enemy, which we are going to be doing this, and added the input component to it to allow for some form of input for movement and other things, this code on our player input system would also find the AI. So let's just go ahead and add another tag here for the player tag that we created. So we'll say game.player, and we'll name this player tag Now this system will only run on our players. We are going to create a new script called a input service. And inside of here we'll hold all of the functions that control what your character or entity should be doing when it receives a certain input like movement, jump, and attack. So what we're going to do is we are going to create, we'll get rid of extends component system, get rid of the on update. We're going to create a static function called move. And inside of here, we're pretty much going to be doing this, but more streamlined. So all we actually need to say is we'll first ask for an input, the input for the entity that we're currently calling the move function on. So game.input. We also need a movement, which is a game.movement, and a direction, which will be a vector too. Then inside of here, we'll say input.axis is equal to direction and then movement.direction is equal to input.axis. 
we'll create another function called static jump. And for this one, we'll only need a movement. It'll say game.movement. Then we'll just say movement movement dot should jump equals true. Now we need to set up our attack function. And we'll ask for a world, which is a ut.world, and an entity, which is a ut.entity. Then we'll say if world dot has component entity attack so if the entity has an attack component we'll say let atk equals world dot get component data entity game dot attack then we'll say attack dot combo step equals true world dot set com set component data the entity and the attack then we'll return then here we'll just say let attack equals new game dot attack world dot add component data entity and attack All right, that's all we need to do for our input service class. We can now go into our player input system and make this file cleaner. So here we can say input service dot move. We'll pass in the input, the movement, and the new vector too. We can copy and paste this here and then change this to a positive one and this to a zero. Then we can get rid of movement.direction and here we'll say input service.jump. We'll pass in the movement. And now here we can get rid of all of this and just say input service dot attack. Pass in the world and the entity. Let's go ahead and play our game and make sure everything is still working. We're still able to walk and our tap Yep, and our attack combo still works. Cool. And our jump still works. Can we actually apply damage? Cool, we can. All right, the next thing we'll do is create the AI service or the AI input system. So let's create a new script. We'll call it AI input system. open that up and then just to make sure this will work on our AI components we're just going to copy and paste all of this and just change the keys that are required so oops, copy paste change player to AI make this say AI tag Now let's use the arrow keys. And the up arrow for jumping. And we'll use P for attacking. Let's go back into our project and see if we can control the AI entity. Alright, we are able to walk around, the jump's not working, but the attack is working, so what did we do wrong on the jump? Hmm. 
not sure. Is the oh, it's probably the density on the character. Maybe the jump is working, but it just looks like it's not. Yeah, you can see a slight movement on him, just barely. So we can go back into our Unity project, click on the enemy. Uh, I guess let's put his friction the same as the enemy, so 0.5 and 10. And then let's change the jump force to accommodate for that. So we'll open our movement system. Or I forgot, we added the jump force as a field on the component. So we can just go to here and increase the jump force field. So we'll increase it to 125. I think that'll be a good value. Let's change it to 125 on him also. Let's click play and see if we're able to jump. Cool, we're now able to jump. So now technically we have a two player game. Let's make sure the death system works on the AI. Cool, let's refresh and make sure the death system works on the player. Sure doesn't, let's find out why. If you go to the player, you'll notice that the difference between the player and the enemy is there's a destructible and a health component, but on the player there isn't, so let's add both of those components a destructible, and a health. We'll change his current HP to 100 and max HP to 100. Click play. And you'll see he just instantly disappears. The reason for that is in the previous video when we created the animations we didn't center the animations when we duplicated them. You can actually, instead of zeroing them out, you can just get rid of the transform local position altogether because if it's at zero, 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 then it doesn't actually need these fields. Click play again. And you'll see the players now doing the herd animations. And after we attack him enough times, he should die. Yep, excellent. So the next thing we're going to do is set up the AI entity to be able to automatically attack the player when you get close enough to him. Let's go back into our script files. We'll go into the AI input system. And instead of pushing P, we're going to do a few math calculations to figure out whether or not we should call the attack function or not. So let's just get rid of this. So now he'll call the attack function once every update. But that's not what we want. So we'll say this dot world dot for each. And what we're looking for are all the players in the world because the enemy is only ever going to attack the player at our current development of this game. So we'll look for the player and we also need its transform local position for depend determining how close it is to us. We'll name these player tag and transform. Inside of here, we're going to say let transform scale equal this dot world dot get component data entity ut.core2d dot transform local scale and then we're also going to get the local position so copy and paste that we'll name this transform position and then instead of local scale we're looking for the local position so in the for each loop we're storing the enemies transform here so we'll actually call this enemy transform or I guess it's the player transform so we'll actually call this player transform that'll make more sense and then this is the 
AI's trans transform, but we'll leave that as transform position. Now we're going to say if transform dot position. I guess we can just name this transform since we either named the other one player transform. It'll just easier. So we don't say transform position dot position. Dot distance to player transform dot position is less than two. And we also want to determine whether or not we are facing the player. So we'll say if game service dot is facing entity transform player transform and the transform scale. The reason we have to pass the scale in is because the rotation of our entities is based off whether or not our scale is negative one or one. So if we are facing the player, we'll allow the attack system to go off. Cool. Let's go back into our game and see if that works. Let's click play. We'll walk behind the enemy. He does not attack us. Let's walk in front of him and see if he will attack us. And he is awesome. Let's leave it playing and make sure that the player dies. And he does. And then once he dies, the enemy stops attacking. Now the last thing we can do is make a couple more enemies on the screen. And let's actually put one up here and we're going to make him face the other direction. Let's click play. So let's make sure that they are all able to attack us. He's attacking us. He attacked us. And he attacks us. But if we walk up to him and we both attack at the same time, you'll see that we get stuck inside of the hurt animation and we don't ever go back to any other animations. Let's find out why. So if we go into our script folders and into the attack system, right here where we play the hurt animation, we only want to play that hurt animation if we are not currently in the middle of an attack. So we'll say if explanation mark world dot has component date dot has component destructible ENT game dot attack. Then we can hit Alt Shift F to auto organize our code. Control KD if you're using normal Visual Studios. We can go ahead and save go back into our project and see if that fixes our problem. If you walk up to the enemy entity and attack, you'll see that now we are no longer getting stuck in our hurt animation. We both lost. All right, I think that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll start setting up how our entity should actually be spawned into the game. Currently, we aren't spawning them in, we're just hard placing them into the screen. But what we should actually be doing is we should have a bootstrap entity. So an entity called bootstrap that loads up the first level in the player. And then we should have an enemy spawner that starts spawning in enemies. We also need to start setting up the enemy movement so they'll try to find and walk towards the player, and a few other things. But until then, have a wonderful day, and I hope I'll see you in the next video.